If a sandwich is defined as a food that consists of various fillings placed between two pieces of bread, can we then say that anything that's slapped between two slices of bread is a sandwich? Does that mean bagels, tacos, hot dogs, quesadillas, hamburgers, or even pizza, in the sense of an open sandwich, are all sandwiches? This debate has haunted us for ages, and I'm pretty sure John Montague, the fourth Earl of Sandwich, would be rolling in his grave if he saw the chaos that now surrounds this topic. But fortunately for him, we are here to end this debate once and for all. Welcome to Foodopedia, the place to feast on food knowledge served hot and super fresh for everyone. In today's video, we'll be busting all the myths and sour tales about sandwiches by uncovering their multifaceted origins, exploring their legends, and unearthing the tantalizing truth behind sandwiches, which have been the underrated star of the culinary world for many years. So, pull out a chair, grab a snack, or maybe a sandwich, but make sure it's actually a sandwich, as we uncover the truth and, of course, answer the ultimate question. What exactly is a sandwich? When talking about what a sandwich really is, we cannot begin to call a hot dog a sandwich or a tortilla wrap a sandwich if we don't first understand its origin. So, let's head over to history class for a minute or two and learn about how it all came to be. The first lesson is that a sandwich is actually as old as man. Well, not exactly, but it probably existed before any of us were born. The second lesson, the Jewish sage, Hillel the Elder, was recorded as the first person to ever make an attempt at a sandwich during the first century CE. Legend has it that he ingeniously placed lamb and bitter herbs between two pieces of flatbread, making the earliest recorded attempt at creating this iconic food item. But it wasn't until the 1700s before the word sandwich was spoken. In fact, precisely the 24th of November, 1762. The word came from the diary of Edward Gibbon, a British historian. According to Gibbon, he once saw a man devouring a chunk of cold salty meat sandwiched between two slices of bread. Lo and behold, that fellow was none other than John Montagu, the fourth Earl of Sandwich. Now, the story of John is pretty funny and well known as he was a gambling addict who would spend countless hours in the casino and always seemed to request salted beef in between two pieces of toasted bread just so he could eat with his hands while still gambling. He pretty much made sure nothing took his eyes off the game, not even some meal. And since this particular food has no name, his name, Sandwich, stuck with it. And thanks to him, we also get to call it a sandwich and not a god knows what. But Let's set the record straight. John Montagu may have popularized the sandwich, but he didn't exactly invent it, as many folks believe. Nope, he only had the honor of lending his name to this iconic snack. Now, the history class isn't over just yet, as the Chinese also throw their hat into the ring, claiming they were the original sandwich maestros with their rojama, a sandwich which translates to meat folded bun. So, does this mean that China wears the crown for the very first sandwich? Well, you're about to find out. Roger Mo dates back to the Qin Dynasty, about 220 BC. It started in Shanxi province in China, and it's believed to be the first ever sandwich. But with everyone claiming the hotspot for the sandwich king, who then takes the crown? Drum rolls, please. Well, Hillel the Elder remains the only recognized person for the first sandwich invention, although many believe the sandwich has no real origin because it has existed in various forms for many, many years before now. And who knows, maybe it was just one of those things aliens threw down to Earth, and here we are, fighting over who invented it. But it doesn't end there. We still have to talk about how this creation found its way into America and became one of the most convenient snack options. It all started in 1840, when Elizabeth Leslie, an English woman, created a ham sandwich recipe in her cookbook, Directions for Cookery. Her recipe here was pretty simple. Two slices of bread layered with some butter and mayo and very thin slices of cold boiled ham on the bread, rolled up or served flat on a plate. The recipe was so successful that it quickly snuck into America's cuisine. Before you could even spell Jack, the sandwiches had already become very popular food in America, and bakeries even started to sell the pre-sliced bread. That's to tell you the extent to which sandwiches were sold in the early 1900s, and since then, until today, it has remained one of the most famous and most convenient foods in the world. 
And now that you've learned about the controversial history of sandwiches, let's get to the root of the matter at once. What really is a sandwich? In many decades before now, that would have been an easy peasy question with a simple answer. A sandwich is two slices of bread in between fillings like meat, vegetables, and whatever you prefer. But today, you could end up in court over the definition of a sandwich. Yes, I, I mean it. That actually happened, and we'll come back to that in a minute. Ever since the invention, or should we say the epic discovery, of sandwiches, there have been more variations than there are secret ingredients in Coca-Cola recipes. It's like the culinary world got together and said let's stack everything between slices of bread and see what happens. From China to Vietnam, France, Argentina, Cuba, Egypt, and Denmark. In fact, you can say every country has its own sandwich recipe, but for the sake of the video, we'll stick to just a few. Let's kick things off with the epitome of the American dream, the grilled cheese sandwich. Traditionally, it's made with sliced cheese and butter, then grilled until it's crispy and gooey, oozing cheese like a bad habit. Then there is also the Italian tramezzini, which looks more like a mini sandwich, made a little differently from crustless soft white bread, homemade mayo, and endless fillings. Then we have the Mexican semita, which is stuffed with fried meats, avocado, queso, chipotle, and red sauce. And we have Greece, where the sandwich depends on the kind of bread and fillings you prefer. But here's the million dollar question. With all these sandwich variations, where do we draw the line on what earns the title sandwich? And what's just just culinary chaos, it seems like the sandwich universe is a bit of a culinary rebel, refusing to fit into any one box. Since I'm not sandwich certified to answer a question like this, we'll need the ruling from the highest court in the land, the US Supreme Court. Luckily for us, we got just that in 2018, when Stephen Colbert interviewed the legendary jurist, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. He posed the million dollar question, is a hot dog a sandwich? Well, Stephen had to answer the question himself when he said, a sandwich is two pieces of bread with almost any fillings in between. Oh, come on, Stephen, is that all you've got? Well, I'm pretty sure you're not as satisfied with that definition as I am, so we seek more answers. Oh, and there you have it. The US Department of Agriculture, USDA, also chipped in their definition. Those are the guys who know their stuff, so I guess this will be it. According to Mark Wheeler from the USDA, a sandwich is a meat or poultry filling between two slices of bread, a bun, or a biscuit. But again, this explanation doesn't quite do it, because by this definition, it means the all-glorious grilled cheese sandwich is not a sandwich. Peanut butter and avocado sandwich is also not a sandwich. But a hot dog is a sandwich. Oh boy, how did we ever get here? I'm sorry, John Montague, I'm sure you never saw this coming. So, who else can we turn to to provide us with the answers we seek? Oh yes, the New York Tax Bulletin 835. According to these guys, a sandwich is anything made on bread or on bagels or rolls in pitas, in wraps or otherwise, and regardless of the filling or number of layers. Okay, it seems like the state of New York took this definition a little bit too far. Based on this, anything can be classified as a sandwich, including hot dogs, burritos, bagels, tortilla wraps, and even pizza. Well, since the big authorities have failed to impress us with their definitions, we might just have to take this to court. Yes, it's about that time. First, if you're still wondering how defining a sandwich ended up in court, the story goes a little bit like this. In Worcester County 2006, two Mexican food centers, Panera and Cadoba, one serving only sandwiches and the other serving only burritos, had a face-off about selling in the same space. Because to Panera, burritos were sandwiches. Of course, that competition was bad for business. So, as you guessed it, this ended up in court, and the judge was left to decide if his four-year-old daughter eating a bread sandwich and a burrito were the same thing. Well, his top compelling piece of evidence was the definition of sandwich from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, which describes a sandwich as two thin pieces of bread, usually buttered with a thin layer, as of meat, cheese or savory mixture spread between them. Based on this definition, the judge concluded by saying the court finds that the term sandwich is not commonly understood to include burritos, tacos, and quesadillas. And, wait for it, based on the ruling from the court, a hot dog is of course not a sandwich. Neither is a taco, a chicken wrap, or pizza. And there you have it, fellow foodies. The answer to the all-never-aging question. But hold on. Won't it be super cool to add our own definition of sandwich into the mix? I mean, we've sat through the history lesson and analyzed all other definitions, so I guess you can say that we're more than qualified to add ours to the books. So, 
Here it is. We can say a sandwich is any food that consists of two bread slices or other bread-like products such as bagels, buns, and bread, depending on the country. Oh, and the fillings. It can be basically anything you want, from ham to chicken, turkey, cheese, vegetables, and whatever. But it just can't be a condiment like mayo or mustard. Most importantly, it must also have a horizontal structure, and of course, it must be portable. At least, that's the idea John Montague had in mind when he ate it while gambling many centuries ago. And did you know that in the UK, a whopping 3 billion sandwiches find their way into shopping baskets and bellies every year? In fact, British sandwich enthusiasts munched through an impressive 18,304 of these delightful creations over their lifetimes, racking up a bill of an average of £48,339 in the process. Shockingly, a substantial 56% of Brits indulge in a sandwich fix every single day, with Leeds leading the pack at a staggering 20 20 sandwiches per person per month. But that's mere child's play, and it doesn't even come close to the number of sandwiches devoured in the good old USA. An average American enjoys around 200 sandwiches annually, contributing to the grand total of over 300 million sandwiches consumed every single day. It's official, foodies. America is the heavyweight champ of the world in sandwiching. Now that we've nailed down the perfect definition of a sandwich, hold on to your bread, foodies, because there's one more discussion that's still sizzling on the grill. What's in store for the future of this culinary marvel? Will the sandwich evolve into something more extraordinary in the years to come? Are we destined for a world where robots take over the art of sandwich making? Or will we have sandwich vending machines that dispense deli delights at the push of a button? Well, in the not-too-distant future, we might actually have machines that make and build sandwiches from start to finish. Think about it. We've already seen the rise of pizza-making machines in places like Costco's Food Court, churning out cheesy goodness like clockwork. So, the possibility of a sandwich-making revolution is definitely not far from the future, and the next time you're in a rush, you might just be ordering a perfectly crafted sandwich from a high-tech dispenser. In addition, as our hunger for quality health grows, the future of sandwiches is in for a sizzling makeover. Imagine a world where vegans, vegetarians, and folks with health concerns can sink their teeth into delicious sandwiches without batting an eyelash over health worries. That's right, no more sandwich-induced guilt trips. So, the future of the sandwich is already looking like an explosion of tech meets taste, and a whole bunch of newer varieties and flavors that might keep your taste buds hungry for more. With that being said, what's your take on the legendary sandwich debate and definitions? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to also hit that like button, share this video with your fellow foodie friends, and subscribe to Foodopedia for a never-ending supply of great foodie-licious content. See you in the next video.